all right okay uh, i hope everyone can hear me so let us start the lecture for today and uh, remember uh, this uh, we are now talking about characterizing the wireless channel right so we are we are talking about what are some of the parameters or some of the parameters that can be used uh, to basically characterize uh, the properties and the behavior of the wireless uh, fading channel so what we have said in this context is the following thing uh, we have said that any wireless channel I can construct a power profile for a wireless channel so a wireless channel basically can be represented as i equals 0 to l minus 1 ai delta t minus tau i where these ais are these are the amplitude and these tau i's, these are the delay. Right now, uh, I can also look at what is the power that is arriving in each component. So I can represent the power profile. That is, if I call this phi of t as basically, I can simply say this is i equal to zero to l minus one mod a i square delta t minus why that is this is magnitude a i square which is g i which is the power the power in the ith part right and therefore we said we can also construct a power profile Right. we can also construct a power profile that is because basically in a wireless channel we do not have a single path but we have multiple paths and these multiple paths are arriving over an interval of time therefore naturally we have the notion what is known as a delay spread right so in a wireless communication system we also have this notion of a delay spread what is the delay spread delay spread is roughly uh, basically it is the uh, delay or the interval over which the signals are arriving. So delay spread roughly speaking delay spread is interval over which multipath components The delay over the interval over which multipath component the delay spread is the interval over which uh, the multipath component. So roughly speaking, basically the delay spread, for instance, is uh, uh, you can talk in terms of if the delay spread is large for the corresponding wireless channel or the delay spread is small. For instance, say when the cell phone is uh, far away from the base station and there are several scatterers, like in an urban urban environment, the delay spread can be large. However, if uh, the cell phone is closer to the base station and there are not many scatterers, then the delay spread is small. Also remember the delay spread itself is not related to the absolute delay. For instance, depending on the distance, delay itself can be large or small. Right? But the delay spread is something different. The delay spread, it depends on basically the number of scatterers and the number of multipath components and the interval. Right? It is more related to the interval. It is rather related to basically if I have tau 0, and tau l minus 1 it is related to the difference between tau l minus 1 and tau 0 rather than simply the values of tau 0 and tau l minus 1 that is it's not related to a high or a low delay but it's related to what is the interval the length of the interval over which these different multipath components are arriving all right i hope that is clear and then we saw different ways to characterize this delay spread one we said is this Basically, what is this max delay spread? Tau max is equal to tau L minus 1 and tau 0. <coughs> and we also <coughs> defined a slightly refined notion of a delay spread that is known as the RMS delay spread. We said tau RMS. RMS delay spread is basically to define the RMS delay spread. First, what we said is we are going to define this fractional power components Bi equals g i divided by g naught plus g1 plus l minus 1 
that is bi is basically fraction of power bi is basically the fraction of power in the ith path this is bi this is fraction you know power in the ith path and therefore the average delay that can be defined as basically summation of summation of sorry let me just rewrite this average delay let me rewrite this clear bi is the fraction of the power Therefore, average delay tau bar equals summation bi ti tau i which is equal to gi tau i divided by summation of gi from i equals 0 to l minus 1 from i equals 0 to l minus 1. Okay, so this the delay this is the delay tau i which we are weighing by the fraction of the power and that's what we said it's a more reliable metric because you are weighing the delay by the fraction of the power so this is the delay this is the weight which is the power fraction okay that is fine and therefore we also said we also said the RMS delay spread can now be defined as the standard deviation. The RMS delay spread equals the standard deviation which is nothing but if you can even define this as B bar or B i equals 0 to L minus on bi tau i minus tau bar whole square bi tau i minus tau bar whole square this is the standard deviation and this is how we can define the uh, standard deviation of the uh, this is how we can define the standard deviation of the system that is bi equals tau i minus uh, <coughs> tau bar uh, tau i minus tau bar uh, square. So this is the RMS delay spread. This is the RMS delay spread which is also basically the standard deviation of this. Correct? And we also saw an example and this can also be written as gi tau i minus tau bar square divided by summation of gi it's the same thing because if you can replace each bi by gi divided by summation of gi this is what you will get this is what you will get exactly so therefore you have tau 0 equals 0 microsecond g naught equals and therefore, we also saw an example of a multipath profile tau 0 equals 0 microsecond, tau 1 equals 1 microsecond. We have the power of the path 0.1 that is minus 10 dB, and tau 2 equals 3 microsecond we have g2 equals 1 that is 0 db and at tau 3 equals 5 microsecond we have g3 equals 0.1 right and uh, therefore 
what is can someone tell me it does anyone remember we calculated the rms delay spread we calculated the mean delay and rms delay spread tau bar equals what was the value of tau bar what was the value of tau rms what are the value what was the value of tau bar what is the value of tau rms does anyone remember Yeah, tau bar is 2.97 microsecond point 97 microseconds. This is the mean delay that is 2.97 microseconds. And what is RMS delay? The RMS delay is 0.86 uh, microseconds. That is the RMS delay. That is 0.86 microsecond. Okay, that is fine. All right. So everyone remembers this example from the last lecture. That is, we can calculated what is the uh, delay spread. What is the delay spread for this example uh, that uh, comes in the class? Uh, today I want to start a slightly different topic, and that topic is basically uh, the coherence bandwidth. So I want to start with a new topic today. That is known as the coherence bandwidth. See, this is the coherence bandwidth of the wireless. The coherence bandwidth of the wireless channel. Can someone tell me what is the coherence bandwidth? Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to start with the channel frequency response of the wireless channel. I'm going to start with the frequency response of the wireless channel that is the uh, wireless channel which is uh, <coughs> Let's say I have a wireless channel with response with impulse response H of P. So this is let's say the impulse response of my wireless channel. This is let's say impulse response of wireless channel. Then the frequency response is given by the Fourier transform that is H of F is basically the Fourier transform. I hope everyone remembers what, what is the Fourier transform that is minus infinity to infinity H of T e to the power of minus J 2 pi F T T T. Fine, this is the Fourier transform. This is nothing but basically the Fourier transform of the impulse response this is the Fourier transform of the impulse response fine so HF equals HT e to the power of minus J 2 pi FT Now let's take a simple example. For instance, uh, let's consider a simple example. If HT is basically a single impulse, let's say there is no multiplication and HT is only a HT is only a single impulse, that is a single impulse zero. Therefore, FT is basically delta HT is delta T. That is, let us consider a simple example in which HT is delta T. That is, there is no what does HT equal delta mean? HT equal delta T means that there basically there is no multipath scattering, there is no multipath, there are no multiple components, there is only a single path and single path of unit attenuation. That is basically no power gain or power amplification or power attenuation. So the simplest example HT equals delta T, that is the ideal case. What is the channel frequency response for this? HT equals delta T. What is the frequency response? Ok, 
can someone answer what is the frequency response if ht equals delta t everyone should be familiar with this basic with the basic impulse if ht equals delta t what is the impulse what is the frequency can anyone list the one college is already responding can someone else also respond please what is the frequency response corresponding to ht equals delta t that is basically equal to unity right so that is basically if i have ht equals delta t i basically have something that looks it, it is basically flat right it is basically flat that is hf equals 1 over the entire frequency band right everyone can see that it is the it, it is basically flat over the entire frequency band. now let's change this slightly let's say i still have the impulse but not at zero but i have the impulse some delay tau naught that is what i have is basically delta t minus tau naught and this is more realistic i do not have zero delay but i have some delay between the transmit signal and the received signal right if the transmit signal is basically the transmit signal is delayed that is what delta t minus tau naught is what is delta t minus tau naught if i transmit a signal x then at the receiver i have x t minus tau naught that is the most basic and also practical model of a channel that is there is no multipath reflection there might be no multipath reflection but there is a delay of tau naught what is the frequency response for this channel delta t minus tau naught what is the frequency response so if the impulse response If impulse response equals delta t minus tau naught, what is the frequency response? Uh, the frequency response, every, as everyone saying, now there are two parts of this frequency response. Now, if I correct, what the frequency response is an exponential, but if I split it into two parts. That is the magnitude part and the phase part. That is, we have split this frequency response in into magnitude. One is the magnitude is the magnitude and part. What is the magnitude? Can someone tell me what is the magnitude response, what is the phase response? Now if I look at the magnitude, the magnitude is still unity. Of course there is a non-zero phase, the phase is linear, that is what this is. The phase is, in fact, uh, <coughs> the phase associated with uh, this is 2 pi, uh, that is 2 pi f, uh, 2 pi f t naught or omega t naught, that is what everyone says, that is a linear phase. But if I purely look at the magnitude, if I purely look at the magnitude, uh, if at the magnitude response of this thing, the magnitude response, the magnitude response of this is, is flat, right? Now let's say I am transmitting a signal xt, xt through this wireless communication system. If I am transmitting a signal xt, to a wireless communication system xt ht and what I get is yt that is this is the transmit signal xt this is the channel filter ht and this is the output signal yt what is the relation between xt ht and yt this is also very standard and a very basic question everyone should be able to answer that is if i am transmitting xt through the channel ht and the output is yt i can express yt as yt equals yt equals what is the relation between yt and ht and xt in a linear time invariant system yeah, can everyone respond? What is the relation between yt, xt, and ht in a linear? 
it is the convolution so it is the convolution of xt with basically ht or if i write it in terms of the frequency response i have yf equals xf times h everyone can everyone agrees that if i write it in terms of the frequency response of this system yf at the output i have yf equals xf times hf right xf is the spectrum of the transmitted signal hf is the transmitted filter is the transmit is the frequency response of the transmit filter so i have yf equals xf times hf right as simple as that so yf is the output frequency response equals xf which is the input frequency response times hf which is the channel filter right yf equals xf times hf fine now therefore let us consider go back to this previous case that is with delta t equals 1 delta t where ht equals delta t and therefore the impulse response is 1 and now if i look at this if the impulse if the frequency response is 1 what is the output response that is if that is if ht equals delta t then you can clearly see what is y what is the relation between yf and xf can someone tell me if ft equals delta t what is the relation between yf and xf so if ideal if ht equals delta t then yf is identically equal to xf right because that also you can see it in the uh, frequency domain because the because hf is equal to 1 yf is equal to xf also in the time domain because x ht is delta t yt is simply xt convolution of xt and convolution of xt and delta t. that's what we are saying if yf is equal to, if hf is equal to 1 that is xt equal to delta t then what is the relation between yf and hf yf is equal to x of f also in the frequency domain you can see basically i can write this as yf equals mod magnitude yf equals magnitude of xf into magnitude of hf now let us consider another example if the impulse response is delta t minus t naught what is the relation between magnitude yf and magnitude of xf now my question is slightly more refined if ht equals delta t minus tau naught what is the relation between magnitude yf and magnitude of xf what is the relation between magnitude of yf and magnitude of xf if if it is delta t minus t naught the magnitude yf is equal to the magnitude of xf so is there any distortion if i look at the envelope or if i look at the spectrum purely from the magnitude that is let's say i consider a signal xt with magnitude spectrum something that looks like this magnitude xf is there any distortion is there any distortion correct is there any distortion that is my question is there any distortion if 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 the if magnitude hf is equal to 1 there is no distortion right so magnitude yf is basically equal to magnitude of x now let us refine this question now let us say now you are getting the idea now let us realize this question it's a slightly harder question let me generalize let me ask you let me ask to see what you think about this what everyone thinks about this let's say i have a signal this signal is band limited to b of s two sided bandwidth b of is b of s one sided bandwidth is b of s by 2. w equals 
p of s by t. Okay. Now let's say my channel. This is my channel h of s. And remember, this is the magnitude spectrum. Let's say this is the magnitude. Let's say this is the magnitude spectrum. Fine. This is the magnitude spectrum of the. This is the magnitude spectrum of the signal. Now, wa under what condition on the signal will the output spectrum not be distorted? Let me write the question and let me seek the answers from you. Under what? Condition on HF is the input spectrum is the input spectrum. This is the magnitude is the input spectrum magnitude XF undistorted. Is the question clear to everyone? The question that I am asking is basically under what condition on HF, what should I draw here? What is the condition on the spectrum HF? What is the condition on spectrum HF such that the magnitude spectrum is not distorted? See there is the interest, there is magnitude spectrum is important because magnitude is important. The phase spectrum is not, is not because phase simply reflects it delay so the phase spectrum i'm not really very, uh, concerned a lot about the phase spectrum but the magnitude spectrum under what condition is the magnitude spectrum well that is a very simple concern, very simple case if hf magnitude hf is unity that is a very simple scenario can we say something better something more something less restrictive Bandwidth of the channel is greater than or equal to BS. Someone is saying bandwidth of the channel is greater than or equal to BS. Correct. So bandwidth of the channel is or equal to BS. But is it simply enough? Is the bandwidth is greater than BS or we need some condition? Right. What is the minimum condition on HF such that the magnitude spectrum is not distorted? Can someone tell me about it? Yeah, that is correct. The bandwidth is greater than BS and the magnitude is constant over BS. Okay, so we need a channel. So magnitude, so it has to satisfy two conditions. Bandwidth of channel greater than bandwidth of signal. And more importantly, channel response should be constant over the bandwidth channel response should be flat all right channel response or constant for example let me give you an example if i have a channel response like this Let's say this is my channel response. This is my magnitude HF. Will the signal output signal be distorted or not distorted? In this case, is the output signal distorted? Is there any distortion or no distortion? If the magnitude response is, is in this form. Is there distortion? Can everyone respond? Is there distortion? Is there distortion or no distortion?
in this scenario there is going to be distortion why is there distortion can someone respond to that why is there distortion in this scenario that is correct in this scenario there is going to be distortion why is there going to be distortion The magnitude of this channel is not flat, right? Because the channel response, because the signal bandwidth is BS, and you can see the channel, it has a varying frequency response. The channel has a varying. However, 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 if I have a channel like this, let us let me change it slightly. Let us say this is my channel response. This is my channel response. This is magnitude HF. In this scenario, will there be distortion or will there be no distortion in this scenario? Let us say this is my channel response magnitude HF. Will there be distortion or will there be no distortion in this scenario? Will there be distortion or will there be no distortion? In this scenario, there is no distortion. Why? Right? Because the channel is flat over the bandwidth. If I look at this BS, if I look at this BS, if I look at this BS, the channel is, the channel is flat. You can clearly see the channel is flat over the bandwidth. So there is no distortion because magnitude XF into magnitude HF, but magnitude HF is constant over the bandwidth BS. Over the signal bandwidth, magnitude HF is flat. Now let me pose a general question. Now let us go to a general scenario. Let me give a definition. Let us consider any channel filter. Let us say this is my channel H of F. Let us consider what is the bandwidth of this filter over which the response is flat. That is consider Let us consider the bandwidth over which the response is consider the bandwidth over which the response is flat that is basically i am considering the bandwidth over which the response is is over which the response is flat this bandwidth over which the response is flat this is known as the coherence bandwidth pc this bandwidth so this bandwidth over the which the channel response is flat is known as the coherence bandwidth what is the definition bc equals coherence bandwidth coherence bandwidth is basically the bandwidth over which the channel response is the bandwidth over which the channel response is flat the coherence bandwidth is the bandwidth over which the channel response is basically flat. Coherence bandwidth, right? So, 
this flat part of the channel filter that is if I took at the channel filter the flat part of the channel filter that is this bandwidth this range over which the channel response is flat the magnitude response this is known as the coherence bandwidth can someone tell me can someone tell me now what is the relation between my question to everyone is what is the relation between distortion and coherence bandwidth can someone tell me What is the relation between distortion and coherence bandwidth? When will we have distortion and when will we not have distortion? With respect to the signal bandwidth, correct? BS. What is the relation between distortion and the coherence bandwidth? Let me make question more specific. We have coherence bandwidth BC. We have signal bandwidth BS. What is the relation between coherence bandwidth and the signal bandwidth? What is the relation between the coherence bandwidth VC and signal bandwidth BS? Can someone tell me what is the relation between these? When will I have distortion? Under what condition will I have distortion? Can someone tell me under what condition uh, will there be distortion and under what condition there is no distortion? no distortion if what is the relation between let's look at these two figures the coherence bandwidth BC and the signal bandwidth BS this is the signal bandwidth this is the coherence bandwidth let me draw it clearly once more so that you can see both of them you can see this is the signal bandwidth and this is the coherence bandwidth VC coherence bandwidth VC under what condition will there be no distortion if BS is greater than BC then there is distortion if BS is greater than BC there is distortion if BS on the other hand is less than BC then there is then there is no distortion if BS is greater than BC there is distortion if BS is less than or equal to BC then there is no distortion if BS correct Right? Everyone can see that if BS is greater than BC then there is distortion. So that is a fundamental relationship between the signal bandwidth and the coherence bandwidth. The coherence bandwidth, if the transmitted signal bandwidth is greater than or equal to the coherence bandwidth then there is uh, distortion. But if the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth, that is the bandwidth of the signal is less than range over which the channel response is flat, there is no distortion. I hope everyone can, uh, is able to understand that. Although several people are able to point that out, so I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I see most people are able to understand this simple concept, right? Now, what is more important in the channel to characterize this coherence bandwidth? How do we get a coherence bandwidth? Now, let us go back to our simple case. Let us go back to our simple case where we had a single impulse. And that is where this is important. Let's say I have a single impulse, delta T minus tau naught. 
Can someone tell me what is the coherence bandwidth of this channel? If ht equals delta t minus t naught, what is the coherence bandwidth? If ht equals delta t minus, if ht equals uh, delta t minus, uh, if ht equals delta t minus tau naught, then the coherence bandwidth, coherence bandwidth is infinity, right? The coherence bandwidth is infinite because the channel response, magnitude response is flat over all the entire frequency. Therefore, coherence bandwidth is Vc equals infinity. Now, let us consider another extreme. Let us say there is multipath scattering is there is a large amount of multipath scattering so ht equals minus infinity of course i am considering a hypothetical situation but i am saying there is a large amount of multipath scattering so that ht equals 1 ht is not the impulse response but ht is 1 over the entire time duration that is an extreme example right i am just taking a simple example to illustrate what happens in both the extremes in this scenario, what is the coherence bandwidth? Can someone tell me what is the coherence bandwidth? That is, if delay spread, okay, let me not come to delay spread here. Yes, coherence bandwidth is zero. Why is the coherence bandwidth zero? Can someone tell me why is the coherence bandwidth zero? If I plot the frequency response, how will this look like? What is the frequency response of this? If it's unity for all time, what is the frequency response? If it is unity for all time, what is the frequency response? Frequency response is frequency response is delta t. Therefore, the delay spread delay spread is I am considering two ideal cases, right? Now, if I have what you can see, what is the relation? Now, can someone tell me what is the relation between delay spread? See, if you have an impulse in time domain, what is the delay spread of this channel? That is, if we have done, what is the delay spread? What is the delay spread of this impulse at tau naught? Can someone tell me what is the delay spread of this impulse at tau naught? That is the first channel that we consider. What is the delay spread? What is the delay spread of this channel? My question is simple. What is the delay spread of this channel which is a single impulse at tau naught? For a single impulse at tau naught, the delay spread equals 0. So if delay spread equals 0, we are getting coherence bandwidth Vc equals infinity. Now on the other hand, consider, look at this channel. This channel is 1 over entire time. What is the delay spread of this channel? This channel which is 1 over the entire time, what is the delay spread? Delay spread is infinity. And for delay spread infinity, the coherence bandwidth is Vc equals 0. So you can see if delay spread equals 0, tau delay equals 0, we have Vc equals infinity. But if tau delay equals infinity, then Vc equals 0. Therefore, Everyone can see that the delay spread is inversely related to the coherence bandwidth. Can everyone see that? Is that clear to everyone? Can everyone see that? Is everyone able to understand this? Delay spread is inversely Delay spread is inversely proportional to the coherent bandwidth. As the coherence bandwidth is increasing, in fact, the coherence bandwidth increases. What happens to delay spread? Delay spread
as the coherence bandwidth increases the delay spread what happens to the delay spread the delay spread decreases as the coherence bandwidth increases the delay spread decreases therefore we have tau delay or sigma tau or let me simply call it as the delay spread or let me call it as td that is the delay spread that can be any delay spread in general it can be maximum delay spread or rms delay spread td is inversely proportional to bc or proportional to 1 by bc so this is the fundamental relationship that td is inversely proportional to the coherence bandwidth and in fact an approximate relationship that is often used in practice is that the coherence bandwidth equals 1 by this is the approximate relationship that is used in the this thing now this relationship is approximate this different this is different in different textbooks for instance in some textbooks they will say bc equals 1 over 10 td in some textbooks they will say bc equals 1 over 5 td so there is nothing fixed. this is the rule of thumb let me just characterize this thing this is a rule of thumb right because of course the question depends on how flat is flat right because when do we say that it's flat there is various definitions of flat is this flat or if it's slightly lower or is this also flat also so there are various definitions of the flatness itself right similar to the bandwidth of a filter like 3 dB bandwidth null to null bandwidth and so on there are various definitions of the coherence bandwidth right so all these definitions of delay spread etc and relation between delay spread and coherence bandwidth they are only the rule of thumb because the bandwidth itself is there are various definitions of the coherence bandwidth so basically this rule of thumb which says ps pc equals 1 over 2 td is a valid approximation first the most important thing this says is that basically the coherence bandwidth is inversely proportional to delay spread therefore one way to characterize this relation is basically by saying bc equals 1 over 2 td and this is what Over that BC is basically equal equal to one over two T T. That is the coherence bandwidth BC is equal to one over two. Now, of course, in practical wireless channels, outdoor wireless channels, we have seen what is the value of approximately equal to what is the value of TD in outdoor wireless channels. it is in microseconds correct so let's say td is approximately 2 microseconds can someone compute what is the value of co coherence bandwidth for 2 microseconds is everyone getting the question we said in outdoor wireless channels td that is the delay spread is approximately 2 microseconds what is the coherence bandwidth when the delay spread is to microseconds that is by this formula it is given as bc equals 1 over 2 into microseconds bc equals 1 over 2 into 2 microseconds that is 0 0.2 by megahertz or 250 kilohertz that is that bc equals 250 kilohertz Typical outdoor wireless channels BC is around coherence bandwidth is around 200 to 300 kilohertz. For a typical outdoor wireless channel, let me also therefore for a typical and remember stress is on typical outdoor wireless channel BC is around 200 to 300 so for a typical outdoor wireless channel bc is around 200 to 300 kilohertz for a typical outdoor wireless channel delay spreads are around microseconds therefore bc is around 200 to 300 i'm i'm coming i'll take some questions short but before that let me ensure that everyone understands the basic concept 
So the basic concept is, let me repeat again, what we have learned today, if I have to recap, that we have a notion of a coherence bandwidth. What is a coherence bandwidth? A coherence bandwidth is simply the portion of the channel response, the portion or the range of the response, range of frequency over which the channel response is flat. We have seen that this coherence bandwidth is important if the signal should not experience distortion. That is, if the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth, there is no distortion. If the signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth, then there is the distortion. Therefore, coherence bandwidth is an important quantity. And we have also seen that the coherence bandwidth is inversely proportional to the delay spread. That is, the coherence bandwidth is inversional to the delay spread. Find the coherence bandwidth is inversely proportional to the delay spread. And one approximate way, a rule of thumb is basically coherence bandwidth is 1 over twice the delay spread. That is 1 over 2 TD. And we have said in practical outdoor wireless channels, if the delay spread is 2 microseconds, since the delay spread is in microseconds, the coherence bandwidth is around 250 kilohertz. Right? So that so with that, I will summarize that for typical outdoor wireless channels, coherence bandwidth are around 200 to 300 kilohertz. Which means also, if signal bandwidth is greater than less than 200 kilohertz, there is no distortion in a typical outdoor channel. If the signal bandwidth is greater than 300 kilohertz, then there is going to be distortion. And this is an important aspect. This is an important criteria for wireless communication system. Right? I am going to talk more about later. Let me take some questions briefly, please. Does anyone have any question? There is one question, what is the delay between, what is the relation with mean delay and RMS delay spread? We clearly said this, the mean delay is tau bar. Mean delay, where is the mean delay? Expression for mean delay. Mean delay is tau bar, which is bi tau i. This is the average delay of the signal. DVS spread is the standard deviation. Mean is the mean of a random variable. The deviations, the standard deviation is the standard deviation of the random variable. For instance, if I have a Gaussian distribution, then the mean is basically the mean mu naught and the standard deviation is related to the spread, that is sigma. So that is the same relation between the mean delay and the RMS delay. Mean delay is simply a delay, mean, and RMS delay spread is the spread, that is the standard deviation. Right? Is that clear? Any other question, please? Is everything clear regarding the coherence bandwidth and the relation between the coherence bandwidth and delay spread? I also want you to remain, uh, remind everyone and I hope you got the email reminder uh, that there are going to be extra classes tomorrow, Thursday and Friday to make up for the two lectures that we lost because of network problems. There is one question, how LP can be correlated with uh, BC, I am not sure, what is this LP, can someone, can you please clarify what is LP? Yeah, LP is is low pass filter. Low pass filter related with uh, coherence bandwidth correlation between low pass and coherence bandwidth. The question is confusing. I think what you want to ask is what is the relation between a filter and uh, filter bandwidth and coherence bandwidth. Is that what you are trying to ask? Well, the relation is slightly complicated because for a filter, a filter can be a low pass filter or a high pass filter and filter has a very simple structure. A filter is simply a low pass, that is it has a pass band and it has a, it has a stop band. But in a channel, 
there is simply not a fast band and a stop band there are going to be all kinds of bands right i can have a channel response which looks which is basically has a response that looks something like this that is first it has a high response then it has a low response and this is known as selective channel we will come to this thing basically in different bands it response can be different so a channel is much general it is an lti system but it cannot be simply a low pass or band pass or high pass filter a channel response can be frequency dependent and it can be frequency dependent over a wide frequency range all right so the channel response is basically it's very different from either a low pass a simple low pass or high pass characteristic it's not simple uh, pass as band and stop band kind of a characteristic i hope that clarifies any other question there was some question on simulations yes you can perform simulations simulations can be done in matlab typically we have we perform simulations using matlab there are several commands to implement gaussian random variable and of course relay flat fading and so on matlab can be used and simulink and other things can also be used so on and so forth so several several simulation platforms can be used to simulate these wireless communication systems that is correct and experiments can be performed using matlab typically we use matlab to perform simulation experiments for to model wireless communication systems any other question please Okay, if I, uh, no one else has any questions, then I think we can conclude this session. Just a reminder to everyone that we will have extra classes today and Friday. This is the last week of classes. We will have extra classes tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. In these two classes, I hope to cover the Doppler aspect of wireless communication. Where Doppler aspect basically talks about what is the effect of what is the Doppler effect, what is the Doppler effect on wireless communications and modeling of a wireless channel, and how does it result in a time varying. all right so tomorrow and thursday and friday we will have extra lectures thank you the names of the books i have repeated this several times the names of the books are in the download section of this course please go to the download section of this course in the beginning itself i have put up a list of textbooks and i also repeated it several times the books of the textbooks names are fundamentals of wireless communications by david j pramod vishwanath that is available on the web openly the other textbook is wireless communications by andrea gold all right can someone point please point to the document where the names of the textbooks have been given okay all right thank you thank you very much thanks everyone